Now, in verse 5, And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him obeisance, then was Haman full of wrath. Now, ordinarily, if he's a big man, and they called it to his attention, he said, oh, forget it. He doesn't want to bow. If he wants to be different, let him be different. But this man, Haman, is annoyed by this to the extent that he hates this little man, and he's not going to just take out his hatred on him. He's going to take it out on his people. And in verse 6, he disdained to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had made known to him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore, Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. Now, we see the plot. This man is working to destroy the entire nation of Israel. Now, can't you see that God was moving back of the scenes in this pagan heathen court, putting someone on the throne next to the king in order at the right moment that might intervene in behalf of him. You see, standeth God in the shadows, keeping watch over his own. And how important that is to note here, my friend. Now, again, we've come to a very important place. And this is a good place to come in a continued story. Now, what's Haman going to do? How is he going to manipulate it that he can exterminate these people? Well, he's a clever rascal, and he'll come up with something. And believe me, he's a villain. Pharaoh attempted it. And then we discovered that Herod attempted it. And then more recently, Hitler attempted it. Haman is in that lot. And they need to know that because these people have been the repository for the Word of God, the Word of God has come through them. And because the Lord Jesus, according to the flesh, came through this line, why the devil has been anxious to destroy them. Now, as a nation, they're like the rest of the nations, far from God today. And that little nation over there is not any ways near God. They have a religion, but it's not the religion of the Old Testament even. They are far, far from God. And there are just a small percentage, as there is a small percentage of Gentiles who've turned to the Lord Jesus Christ. But nevertheless, God has a purpose for the nation, and there will be a turning back to him on the part of these people when God concludes his purpose in the church. Now, the devil has attempted to destroy them, and God has put up a certain hedge around them. God said when he called Abraham to make of him a nation, he says, I'll bless them that bless thee, I'll curse them that curse thee. And believe me, all you have to do is read history to find out that that is accurate and that that is true. And we also called attention to Isaiah 54, 17. He says, "...no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn." Too bad Haman didn't know about this. Well, if he'd even known about it, He wouldn't have believed it, but it's too bad he didn't believe it because this was his undoing. But this man now has been elevated to a very high position in a world empire. He is the prime minister. And because this little man Mordecai will not bow to him, and I rejoice in him now, he's taking a stand that he should have before this. But at least now... He's taking a stand, actually, for the Mosaic law, for God. He will not bow down. And that disturbs this man, Haman. It irritates him no end, and he's going to do something about it. But he didn't want to just lay hands on one little man. He now turns to the...